Eleven gruesome murders committed in and around the Whitechapel district of London, England between 1888 and 1891 gave rise to the awareness that a serial killer, Jack the Ripper, was afoot. He was also called the Whitechapel Murderer and Leather Apron. How did Jack the Ripper acquire his name? He named himself in a letter to the press in what is dubbed the Dear Boss Letter. The Dear Boss Letter was written by the man claiming to be the murderer, which was distributed by the press. The letter is widely believed to have been a hoax perpetrated by the newspaper itself in order to drive newspaper sales and circulation. Nevertheless, the name stuck and it still fascinates us 136 years later. Do you think it is a hoax? 25th September 1888 Dear Boss, I keep on hearing the police have caught me, but they won't fix me just yet. I have laughed when they look so clever and talk about being on the right track. That joke about leather apron gave me real fits. I am down on whores and shan't quit ripping them till I do get buckled. Grand work the last job was. I gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? I love my work and want to start again. You will soon hear of me with my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle on the last job to write with, but it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink is fit enough, I hope. Ha ha. The next job I do, I shall clip the ladies' ears off and send to the police officers just for jolly. Wouldn't you keep this letter back till I do a bit more work, then give it out straight? My knife so nice and sharp, I want to get to work right away if I get a chance. Good luck. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Women's plight in Whitechapel, London was dire and impoverished. Many had to resort to prostitution due to life's unfortunate circumstances and lack of available work or family connection. It is estimated that there were 62 brothels and 1,200 women working as prostitutes in Whitechapel, 1888. Women who survived the harsh realities of the era had a life expectancy in 1888 of about 43 years. Hard life would age them quickly and most probably had no teeth or bad teeth and they would have looked haggard and unattractive. A night's lodging cost four pence, the equivalent of two pounds, and likely they only earned a pence per customer, if you catch my drift. Some of their earnings they likely spent on gin in the local pubs. These women were among the poorest residents in London, often living penny to penny in one of the most crowded, unhealthy corners of the city, and often spent the night wandering the streets until morning if they could not afford the lodging house four pence. Mary Ann Polly Nichols, for example, could not afford a bed that cost four pence in a lodging house on the night of August 31st, 1888. So she jauntily put on her best bonnet, vowing to the housekeeper, I'll soon get my money. See what a jolly bonnet I have. Nichols set out that night to earn money so she could have a place to sleep. She never made it back. Hours later, her murdered body was discovered on Bucks Row. There were 300 suspects for the Jack the Ripper murders. 80 of them were questioned, including John Merrick, the famed elephant man, simply because he lived in the hospital near the vicinity of the murders in Whitechapel. What do five of the Ripper's victims have in common? Five victims of the Ripper were Marianne Nichols, Ann Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Marie Jeanette Kelly. These five were dubbed the Canonical Five and were considered by the police to be the only true victims of the Ripper out of 11 murders. These five talked with each other and gossiped with each other. They all knew each other, lived close to each other, and drank together in the same pub as friends do, and they knew something, something so potentially devastating to the then monarchy of England, the Victoria era, that they had to be silenced. What was that something? Enter Queen Victoria's son Edward, a young man 
who knew little of the real world, and Victoria wanted him exposed to the real world for the sake of his general education. Prince Albert Victor, affectionately known as Eddie, was the eldest son and second in line to the throne. Eddie was destined for greatness. William Sickert, a painter of royalty of Denmark, was assigned to take Edward around. They disguised themselves as common folk, and that is what the two did, frequenting pubs and places the common people went. Slumming was a popular notion of the day. Sickert was fond of Annie, a girl who worked in a sweets shop, and introduced her to Edward, who fell in love. The two actually secretly married under a false name at St. Saviour's, a private chapel. From this union, a daughter was born in 1885. Prince Albert Victor and Annie Crook had a daughter together, Alice Crook, who by her birth became an heir to the British throne. This would not do, as she was Catholic and of low birth. In 1888, Queen Victoria and Prime Minister Robert Cecil discovered Prince Albert Victor's secret and felt this could disgrace and devastate the monarchy that was already fragile at the time. Should the news come out, this would be devastating. Annie Crook was placed into the custody of Sir William Gull, Queen Victoria's physician, who had Annie committed to an asylum and workhouse where Prince Edward's daughter was born. Sir William Gull was known to perform abortions and to generously sign off to have pesky women committed to asylums in the day. He assigned Annie over and lobotomy-like procedures were performed on her in an attempt to erase her memory. Mary Kelly, a friend of Annie's, who knew all about the situation, blackmailed the wrong people for money with the information. Mary Kelly, along with her prostitute friends, Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, and Catherine Eddowes decided to blackmail the royalty. The Prime Minister, learning of this, possibly decided at that moment that asylum, which was the common disposal method for pesky ladies of the day, was not sufficient. Anyone and everyone who knew about Edward's ill-fated romance with a commoner and subsequent birth of a possible heir had to die. That meant that Mary Kelly and her closest friends had to go. It is believed that Sir William Gull was given the task of murdering the women. With the assistance of coachman and accomplice John Netley, Sir William Gull, the surgeon, likely became Jack the Ripper. The Prime Minister and the Queen's Royal Surgeon were members of the Freemasons that employed secret rituals at the time. We know the Freemasons may have done a lot of good, and there are many chapters of them. This is not to disparage the Freemasons, but this one particular lot back in 1886 were rumored to have even had killing rituals. The theory is this. The women friends of Annie Crook were located and targeted. Three men were involved in the doings. The Queen's surgeon, Sir William Gall, John Netley, and William Sickert. These men likely used a carriage to carry out their deeds. The carriage could pick up the women and secrete them from view. They were likely given laudanum, and according to Sickert in his declining years, this was the case. The laudanum was to calm and possibly even make the victims unconscious, and the killings could take place in the carriage, could contain the blood, and be hosed down after. The bodies were all nearly drained of blood and showed signs of ritualistic killing. The throats being slashed left to right in the manner of the mason rituals of the day, the slits over one of the victim's eyes, and the entrails pulled out and thrown over the shoulder of some in the same manner of secret ritualistic Freemasonry. In later years, Sickert, probably the least active participant in the killings, shows a haunting depiction of torsos with intestines pitched over their shoulder in a painting. Prince Eddie ultimately died in 1892 at the young age of 28 from influenza. 
The Jack the Ripper murders have never been solved. Many compelling and detailed videos on YouTube examine various suspects. After each one, you will likely decide, he did it, or no, he did it. Personally, I've decided that they did it. But what are your thoughts? Please comment below and tell me if you have a different favorite suspect. I want to hear from you. Who was Jack the Ripper?